We're diving into video number four of the series. I'm Joe Farewell, Farewell Firearms Training and Team Atlas Gunworks, and I bring you Charlie Perez of Big Panda Performance. He's also a firearms trainer and a team shooter for Atlas Gunworks. He's going to be explaining proper sight alignment and different types of focus that we use to shoot different types of targets. Hope you guys enjoy this one. This is Charlie Perez from Big Pen Performance. Atlas Gunworks asked me to come up with a video about iron sights on their pistols. This is an Atlas Titan that has iron sights on it, a front sight and a rear sight. And I want to go over from the basics to more advanced fundamentals associated with shooting iron sighted pistols. So on this whiteboard, I have different examples of different topics I wanted to cover. So the first topic is sight alignment. And some of this is talking about the verbiage of things and getting used to knowing what is called what. So sight alignment refers to the mechanical alignment of the rear notch compared to the front post. Now a common recommendation for sight alignment with iron sights is uh, even height and even light, so talking about the light bars between the front and rear sight. So even height and even light will equal aligned sights for most people. Now, that's where we get into the next step of what is a sight picture versus sight alignment. So sight alignment is alignment of the sights regardless of what target you're aiming at. A sight picture is what you're aiming at along with sight alignment. Now in this reference, the sight alignment is always going to be assumed. We're not gonna be talking about deviated sights where the front sight might be displaced left or right or up or down. We'll just assume for this video that they're always aligned, which that should be our target. Uh, <clears throat> for our sight picture, that means sights on a target. Now there are two common sight picture examples here that people like to sight in their guns. Now there's always gonna be an offset between the sight alignment or the point of aim versus the point of impact, okay? Now that is usually a preference for people. Uh, personally, I like to have a center point of aim versus point of impact for my iron-sided guns at 10 yards. Uh, <clears throat> another example here is a six o'clock hold, meaning that you can see the whole target above your aligned sights but your point of end impact is still going to be the center of that target. This is what is commonly called a six o'clock hold and then a center hold. Now, which one of these you wanna use is up to you. It's user preference. Uh, personally, I like to have a center uh, sight picture because I like to put my sights exactly where I want things to hit. So the next thing I wanna talk about here is focus. And that's our visual focus. What are we focused on at any given time? Now, the way that human eyeballs work is we can only focus on one thing or one depth at a time. So if we're focusing on one thing at a certain depth and we wanna see another thing at a different depth, that other thing is usually gonna be out of focus until we bring our focus back to that other depth. Now, this, this is showing three different examples of different focuses. Uh, so a most common uh, focus that we tell our uh, shooters is, hey, let's have a front sight focus. Now this example here is showing, once again, a front post that is black in, in very clear definition. And then I made some jiggery lines in green. That is the rear notch. And the jiggery lines are basically representing this is not in focus. So this would be a good representation of what you would see is if you had a hard front sight focus. Another common focus is a target focus. So here we have our circle and our dot in the middle is nice and focus in this, but our whole sight picture or our sights within the sight picture are blurry. That's where the front and rear sights look like it's on one plane and they are not in focus. The last is somewhere in between, meaning that our focus is currently in the transition of moving from close to far or far to close and we're seeing things in motion, meaning that we don't have a clear target focus, we don't have a clear sight focus, it's somewhere in between, and that really comes into play when we start shooting things very quickly. 
So what we focus on is very important. Now for most what people like to call uh, group shooting or bullseye shooting, very accurate, slow fire, no time involved, let's shoot really accurate groups. This type of sight picture or focus is usually the best. A hard front sight focus where we're uh, aligning a even height, even light, but we have a hard front sight focus to ensure that the displacement of that front sight is not happening and we can keep that sight on our sight picture as good as we can. Now, for action shooting sports, a, a common uh, sighting process that people like to use is to have a hard target focus, meaning that their focus is on the target and they, without a better word, peripherally put the sights on their aiming spot or their focus spot on the target. This is commonly used in a lot of the shooting sports, especially when the targets are at a closer distance. Now this in-between is comes into play if we are uh, in the middle of a shooting array and that array consists of different types or different distances or difficulty of targets. Now if a, you're shooting at a target that is very far away or is a very tight or close shot, you're probably going to start out with this front sight focus, fire your shot, and let's say that the next target you engage is a very close target. Now by the time you get done shooting that really far away target and you quickly drive your gun to the next target, you're probably gonna be in this mode because your focus won't be able to gain a solid, clear target focus yet. So you're, you're gonna have somewhere in between as you're transitioning between targets. Uh, and for the shooting sports like USPSA or IDPA or even Steel Challenge, the rate of fire, the rate that we're shooting, there isn't the luxury to wait for a perfect focused sight or target uh, on every single target that we engage. It's kind of a game of, is it good enough? So the important thing here is that there's not one recipe for focus for every single target type. That's where you're gonna have to do some testing on your own and figure out well, which type of focus do I need for any given difficulty or distance of target. Now the last thing I wanna talk about here is eye dominance. <laughs> The practical shooting sports, uh, they, we heavily promote trying to shoot with both eyes fully open and both keeping both of your eyes fully open helps us have very good peripheral vision and doing that can result into, into some strange aberrations within the sight picture depending on the dominance between your eyes. Uh, for example, most right-handed shooters are right eye dominant meaning that their dominant eye is the right and their passive eye is the left. Now, everybody has a different level of dominance, and if you have a big divergence in your dominance, let's say their right eye is very dominant and your left eye is very passive, you will not run into these aberrations as much or they won't be as distracting as if your dominance is very close. If your eye dominance is very close between each other, you're gonna struggle with seeing scenarios where if you have a, in these two examples here, this, this is assuming you're a right-handed shooter or right eye dominant shooter. <clears throat> if you have a hard sight focus, you're gonna see those sights clearly, but you're gonna see two targets. And in this example, I have set up these two targets in a kind of scrabbly manner. They're not in focus. And one of them is what I would consider a ghost image. And that's this little G next to this left side. Uh, item here. So you're going to see two targets, but you're technically the thing that exists for real is the right target that your sights are aligned with. Now to double check this, you could simply close your left eye and then while you're observing the sights on the target and you can see that ghost image of a target go away and come back depending on your eye being open or closed. Now if we have a hard target focus in this same scenario, right eye dominant shooter, if we have a hard target focus, we're gonna see two sets of sights, but our ghost image of a sights is on the right side. Now this is gonna be confusing for people because if we have a sight focus, the ghost image is on the left. If we have a, a target focus, the ghost image is on the right. That is very difficult for some shooters to get used to because they assume that the ghost image is always on one side or the other. But that is gonna change depending on if you have a sight focus versus a target focus. <clears throat> now this example is showing a right eye dominant shooter where their ghost images would be, 
But if you're a left eye dominant shooter, these would be opposite, meaning that on a sight focus, your ghost image would be to the right of the target. Or over here, if you have a target focus, your ghost sights would be on the left, okay? Now, there are many shooters out there, practical shooters, world champions, national champions, that shoot with what some people call an occluded eye, meaning they may put some tape over the lens of their shooting glass, or they may just totally close that left eye and just shoot with one eye. Now, I personally, I, I have a very close dominance be, be, between both eyes, and I cannot keep my eyes fully open when I'm shooting iron sights because this, do, this ghost imaging of either sights or target gets very confusing for me. My eyes will actually switch dominance, so this ghost thing starts going back and forth between the real thing. So what I like to do is I like to partially crunch down my left eye, my non or my passive eye, so I can still see peripherally out of that eye, but I can't focus on anything with that eye. In that scenario, it's basically replicating a shooting with one eye closed, but it's open enough that I can see stuff peripherally. That's important in the practical shooting sports because it's a dynamic movement type of thing. We're usually engaging targets, then moving somewhere else or doing some gun handling task, or we have to observe where do we go, where are the targets, that kind of stuff. So having better peripheral vision by having both eyes open to a certain manner is a good thing. The other benefit of that keeping peripheral vision, if you had shooting glasses and you put some translucent tape right where you would focus on the sights of the target, but you can still see clearly around that point, that is another solution for that. So hopefully with these examples of different sight alignments, sight pictures, different focus levels and eye dominance, that'll help you shoot your Atlas Gunworks guns better. And if you want any more information, I talked to the, about this topic in uh, great detail in my book, Path to Focused Effort. Uh, you can go on my site, uh, bigpandaperformance.com, order the book, have fun, be safe. Mm -hmm.